Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. So as you know, this is the 2013 Risk Science Center Bernstein Symposium. The Bernstein Symposium has a, a long tradition in the School of Public Health. It honors the, pres uh, the Professor Isidore Bernstein, who was you know, known for his scientific ideals. He was uh, here in the faculty at the School of Medicine and the School of Public Health in the 50s. And he really was, in, in many ways, uh, a real bright star for much of the work that I think has you know, sort of come full cycle. And um, you know, he loved teaching, nurturing, and getting people's minds to open up. Um, he was widely regarded for his work, his outstanding scholarship, in fact, in environmental toxicology and cutaneous biochemistry. And um, I think that he would really have enjoyed being here. This is going to be a great day. We've got a very provocative topic. You know, why is it so hard to pivot based on science? Um, you know, taking a closer look at why is it difficult for leaders to really pivot or change their minds when the evidence is streaming into the contrary of what they think or believe. Um, I was remarking to Andrew, being a geneticist, we're in the heyday of genetics right now, but we're not really finding very much. And so uh, what are we going to do with that? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm hoping to learn something about how to really handle those big political waves and as well as the internal struggle. So we're going to look today at the opportunities, the challenges, and the dangers of doing this uh, mostly in a public sphere. Um, this conversation is very core to many of the struggles that we have in public health every day as evidence comes in that sort of asks us to revamp our paradigms. Uh, so with that, you know, we're going to look forward to an exciting conversation, and I'm going to welcome Andrew Maynard, who is the center director. Thank you very much, Sharon, and welcome, everybody. This is going to be certainly a stimulating, hopefully very exciting, maybe somewhat controversial afternoon. Um, I love it when Sharon introduces something because she says everything that I was going to say, which means I don't need to say it. That was the perfect introduction. And I'm actually going to skip over a lot of what I was going to say because I think you framed things in exactly the right way in terms of how do we deal with this um, distinction between the things that we really want to do and evolving evidence, which we really want to use, but it gets a little bit difficult when it doesn't seem to fit within our worldview. Um, so that was, that was great. Before we get to the actual nub of this, though, there are a few things that I, I do need to say. The first thing is, apart from thanking Sharon, also thanking Dean Martin Filbert, who is the, the Dean of the School of Public Health, for their support in this. I did want to acknowledge the other organizations that have helped us put this on. So you'll see their, their logos at the front here, but just going down the list, I really want to thank the Coca-Cola Company for their support, Chevron, Dow AgroSciences, DuPont, Johnson & Johnson, um, Matter, which is a, a UK-based um, think tank working towards making new technologies work for all of us and bringing together different stakeholders in dialogue. Um, and then we also have support from a, a couple of programs within the School of Public Health, the Environmental Toxicology and Epidemiology Program and the EHS Core Center on Life Stage, life stage Exposures and Adult Diseases. Um, and of course, as Sharon mentioned, the continuing support from the Bernstein Endowment, which makes all of this possible. Also, before I start, I just want to remind you this is a public event, um, so anything you say may be taken down and used in evidence for or against you. <laughs> It will also be live tweeted, so um, if you do want to um, be what my parents would consider antisocial and sit there fiddling on your mobile device, make sure you're on Twitter. We have a hashtag, um, which is hash pivot on science, and we actually have a couple of people at the back live tweeting. Um, so feel free to be part of that conversation as well. So I was going to give a, a bit of a framing, but I don't actually think that's necessary. I think you're all here to hear Mark talk, so I want to get straight on to that, and I want to introduce him. And then once Mark has spoken, we're going to have a, a lively panel discussion up here where I'm going to ask a few people, first of all, to respond to what he said, what really resonated with them, what really jarred with them, what they really want to rip off, and then no, riff off, rather, not rip off. We really don't want any rip offs here. And then we're going to open it to uh, um, questions from the audience. So hopefully we're going to have a lively question and answer session then. And we're not going to have any questions directly at the end of Mark's talk. We're going to leave those um, towards the, to towards the end of the panel discussion. 
So I'd like to introduce Mark. Um, Mark Linus is an author, he's a journalist, and he's an environmental activist. Uh, he's also a visiting research associate at the University of Oxford in the UK. Um, I said he's an author. Um, he was uh, the author of the highly acclaimed book, The God Species, How the Planet Can Survive the Age of Humans, um, that came out a, a couple of years ago um, and came out really to very wide acclaim. And then in 2007, he published Six Degrees, Our Future on a Hotter Planet, and this won the prestigious Royal Society of London Prize for Science Books. And as well as that, it became a TV hit for National Geographic. So Mark is a, a frequent speaker around the world on climate change and biotechnology and um, also nuclear power. He's a member of the advisory board of the Science Advocacy Group, again based in the UK, Sense About Science. Uh, he's also the co-chair of the World Economic Forum's Global Agenda Council on Emerging Technologies. Um, and perhaps most relevantly for this meeting, earlier this year, he came to particular prominence around the world for, and I'm going to use that word, pivoting, pivoting on genetically modified organisms based on his understanding of the state of the science. So with that, the floor is yours, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> 